I'll have the usual. One copy of Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated to go. That's the one. All right, so where should I put you? Uh, no, uh, no, not there. Oh, perfect. Lately, I've been trying to show more appreciation towards the things I take for granted in life. You know, the roof over my head, warm food, and of course, a place to put my games. Not everyone has this luxury, and those types of people are what I like to call digital-only collectors. I mean, I get it. Maybe you have a little sibling who will toss your games around like frisbees, or maybe you have an adorable pet who will gnaw on your game cases. Either way, I can understand why having a digital library would be a more viable option for some. But for me... Yeah, I, I like physical games. I like physical media. It makes me feel like I own these things, rather than just owning the ones and zeros on my hard drive required to play said things. The feeling of popping open my GameCube to drop an undersized disc into it is what gets me up in the morning, and my god, ejecting a cartridge out of my Super Nintendo can be downright euphoric sometimes. The point I'm trying to make here is that I like owning these cartridges and DVDs. In fact, I'd say amassing a collection of this plastic is almost as fun as playing the games themselves. But at the end of the day, you need a place to put all this junk. And that's where nerds like me get all giddy about organizing our games. Now, I don't mean to generalize here. I don't want to assume that how I collect games is exactly how you collect games. So that's why I'm going to try to cover as many of these styles as I can while also being super biased towards my own style because I just can't help it, it's my style. Okay, now first off, there are many different kinds of collectors out there. We already cover digital-only collectors, so we can check those guys off our list. As for everyone else, well, we got some collectors that only collect discs, some that only collect cases, and some that just mix both together into one big pile, and as a result, when they go to play New Super Mario Bros. Wii, how did that get in there? Now, I personally like to keep my games in their designated cases, and I'll alphabetize them on a shelf. I find this method to be the most common among collectors, or at least it seems that way by the number of YouTubers I see with a wall of video games as their backdrop. And hey, I didn't say I wasn't guilty of being one of them. But I mean, who could blame these guys? Having your games on a shelf is cool. There's just something oddly satisfying about lining up the spines of your game cases and cartridges. It's also super convenient too. Let's say you want to play some Mario Kart 64. All you got to do is walk up to your shelf and... Oh. Uh, yeah, some game consoles don't have end labels on their cartridges, which means if you're too cheap to collect the boxes alongside these cartridges like I am, then finding that copy of Mario Kart 64 can become way more difficult than it needs to be. I mean, I, I can find my copy of Donkey Kong 64 no problem, but any regular old gray cartridge game is like finding a needle in a haystack. Now, there are plenty of solutions to this problem. Um, you could display your cartridges like this with their front labels facing out, but this creates another problem. If you have more than like five games in your collection, then you're gonna run out of space fast. That's why I'd say this method works best for Game Boy cartridges, as these guys are about the same size as saltine crackers. But for N64 games, yeah, there has to be another way. Eventually, I broke down and bought some N64 end labels. These can be found on Etsy or eBay for a relatively reasonable price. I mean, after all, you are getting a sticker for every N64 game released in the US, so this sort of acts like a checklist if you're going for a complete set. As for the stickers themselves, they look pretty official. I like how they resemble the box art of these games quite faithfully, and they're pretty easy to slap on too, just make sure they're not crooked. I swear to God! Now this collection is looking good, everything's organized, everything's visible, it's perfect. But what if I didn't have a shelf? Well, there are other places you could put your games. Uh, the box method isn't a bad option. It's compact and easy to hide from your loved ones. Hell, I've seen some collectors keep their DS cartridges in a binder using trading card sleeves. If you got a sock drawer, you could empty that out and put your games inside of it. But where would I put my socks? Congratulations! You won a new game room! Oh my god, really? Where? Your mom's basement! Remember when I said my basement was getting renovated two years ago? Well, uh... It's done. This place has everything. A ping pong table, a projector, and of course, some empty shelves where I can display my games. 
Black moved in. <sighs> a fresh batch of empty shelves. A blank canvas to the eye of a collector. I like to take this as a time to roll call my games and inspect them because disc rot is a thing and I'm scared of it. Now that that's out of the way, we can finally start thinking about what order I'm going to display my games here. With how this basement is set up, we were forced to put the shelves behind the couch, which means the most accessible row is the bottom one. I figured it would make the most sense to put the games I regularly play on this shelf, so naturally I put my Switch games there. Now whenever I want to play Smash, I can just pull this maneuver and happy gaming. I eventually toss the handheld games on here too, cause why not? Above that, I put my GameCube and Wii collection. I like pairing these games together because I can play both of them on the same console. Also, my GameCube collection is tiny. It really doesn't need its own shelf. And lastly for this column, I put my PS4 and 360 collection. A lot of these games are one and dones for me, so I don't expect to be taking games off this shelf too often. Next, I decided the middle column would be the retro column with NES on the top, SNES below that, and N64 below that. Not only is this order chronological, but it's also the order of how often I play each console. And the bottom row will be left as to be determined. Hey, it's always good to have room to grow. Finally, in the last column, I, I, I just put down some movies I have. I dream of someday being able to fill these shelves with more games, but for now, I've got to do something with this empty space. I also like putting little knickknacks in these empty spots too whether those be plushies, figures, a water bottle I never drink out of, or games I'm especially fond of. You know, stuff that'll make your friends say, Oh my god, is that I Spy Funhouse? Now this setup... It fits my personality, and that's really what displaying your game collection is all about. At the end of the day, it's your collection. It should be tailor-made to fit your needs and personal taste. If you need to take inspiration from other collectors, then go ahead. That's part of the reason why I, along with many other collectors, show off our game collections online. If you want to go crazy with it, then go ahead. And if you don't, well, I'm not stopping you. As long as you're happy with how your collection looks, then that's all that matters. It's perfect.